Welcome back to the Loss Prevention News Network. I'm Amber Bradley. Thanks for joining us. So we have two new retailers. You guys have never joined me on the hot seat quick take, right? First time. All right. So we promise to be kind. No, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. So <laughs> let me introduce our guests. We have Pat McAvoy, Senior Director of Asset Protection with Hudson Bay. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. And Brian Gr Granada, Managing Director of Asset Protection for Saks Fifth Avenue, Thank you. right here in NYC. How awesome is that? Crossroads of the world. Okay, so you guys just finished an episode with Gus talking about threat mitigation. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of loss prevention professionals watching us out there that may not get to come to conferences and things like that. So they tune in to get the nuggets of what you guys really think um, will help with this threat mitigation because it's it's not like um, it's becoming a bigger focus these days. You guys were just talking to us about that. So if you had to give LP professionals one or two tips to say, look, maybe they don't have a big team, they don't have a big budget, what would you say um, would be the number one or two things that they could do to help uh, mitigate threats within their organization? We'll start with you, Brian. I mean, I would say situational awareness and training should be foremost. doesn't matter if you work in a large metropolitan city or a smaller town. It's every day you're thinking about the what-ifs, and if that if ever came, what would you do to prevent it or to, to lessen the impact of it? Awesome. What do you yeah, have, Pat? I, I got to say, training is, is crucial. Um, I also say, though, I mean, it, you have to start looking at it differently. It's not about grab and runs anymore. They're gonna happen. This is a, this is a real time threat that's gonna affect your business. It's gonna affect the people, not only employees and customers. Um, and it's, it's, it's unfortunately a bad game changer that could occur. So training is, is crucial. Yeah, especially with threat mitigation, you're not only talking about um, safety of individuals, which is of utmost importance, but you're talking about brand. Brand protection, and, and you guys know a lot about that being right in the heart of New York City. Absolutely. It's the, to, you know, people talk about retail and whether it's up, it's down. Uh, if somebody walks into a brick and mortar store and does something, uh, it doesn't only affect retail. Uh, it definitely would affect us as a brand um, and people that that drive that would drive sales. Yeah. And one of the things we were talking about before um, when we were discussing threat mitigation, you guys said muscle memory. And it's kind of like training your associates to be like athletes right so they understand what to do when if when and if a situation would occur absolutely i mean every day we talk about different types of scenarios and it's you know anywhere from active shooter to vehicle born to someone placing just a bag down on the selling floor and what do you do and it's those different scenarios as you um, talk and train through them if it ever did happen you should be so well versed on that situation that muscle memory just clicks in and you know exactly what to do yeah you're not running going oh my gosh what, what are we going to do so it's interesting because you hope that the odds of something like that happening are so small right. but you also have to keep it fresh and exciting so your associates don't just go completely blank and forget it, right? That's where the yeah. awareness comes in. Exactly, exactly. All right, so as you know, when you're welcome to the hot seat table here at the d and you gotta get some kind of question that's gonna make you a little like, hmm, things that make you go, hmm, are you old enough? You guys aren't old enough to remember that. That was a song of, or something. So we're talking travel hacks, which is the millennials version of tips, I don't know. So travel tips or things that are annoying when you travel. So you can pick which one, a travel tip or things that make you nuts when you travel. What do you got, Brian? I can give you a combination of both. All right. And it's, you know, very prevalent in New York City. And also we talk about, you know, awareness and what you're doing. And nowadays when you walk around New York City, everybody has their, their, their head down looking into their iPhone. You know, and from a, a, a safety perspective and, you know, from an annoyance perspective, people are going to get hit by cars. They're not sure what's going on. Plus, they're bumping into everybody as they're trying to send that text or yeah. read that text. I hear you. And I think it's cool when you're walking around and you see the uh, signs right before the crosswalk that say, look up right. or like, get yeah, off absolutely. your phone or absolutely. something. Right. That's so New York. Shouldn't be. Yeah, 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 it's sad. I love that. It's sad, but yeah. I thought, what did you say? Heads yeah, up. Heads what was up. it? <laughs> That's perfect. All right. What do you got, Pat? I am the worst traveler, probably. So I don't know if I can give you any hacks. Oh, no. I, I would tell you I am the guy that's there two hours early for a flight, and I'm the guy that uh, doesn't uh, 
pack, but pack, I pack everything uh, on a, in a, a, <laughs> So you're, he I, checks I, his bag, I think. I, I check my bag. I, Unbelievable. I, you know, I have a huge bag for an overnight. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a terrible traveler. I'm the guy that's bothering everybody else. Okay, here's yeah. the one question that will really tell you if you're a terrible traveler, okay? Okay. And it's going to make me nuts, so just keep that in mind. Do you put your seat back on the airline? Very rarely do I. Very rarely you're talking one in ten, talking five out of ten. So I will tell you, I, I'm kind of the guy that just goes back a little bit. Oh, uh, the halfway slide. Yeah. Okay. Just because I, I don't that like that one degree. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to sit straight up, but I also don't want to break the guy's stuff behind me. Right. See, so. now that's interesting. That's a thoughtful. I'm courtious. Yeah, he's Very courteous. courteous. The courteous traveler. What about yes. you? Put your seat back. Yes I or no? Not. Yes or no? I do not. He does not. He does not, not put even it a back. Bit. Okay. Well. Good for you. I give you both an A plus. You get an A minus because you're halfway back. Oh, thank you. But thank you so much thank for joining you. us on the hot seat, but most importantly, talking about a very important topic of threat mitigation. This has been Loss Prevention News Network. I'm Amber Bradley. Thanks so much for watching.